This is uh, the Digital Music Trends coverage of Meet M2014, an interview with uh, Bora Salek, founder of Jukli. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the delivery platform used by leading independent labels, distributors and aggregators around the world on ci-info.com. Hi Bora, how's it going? And uh, great to have you on the show. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. And so, you know, let's talk about Jukli. First of all, let's introduce the company to all, all the viewers and listeners out there. Sure. Jukli is a matchmaker for concerts and friends. Uh, when you sign up with it, we learn what you're listening to, what you like, what your friends are listening to, and what they like. And we match you with upcoming concerts, and we match you with friends to go with, even friends of friends to go with, uh, to create an open social conversation around live music and bring people together. So I think it makes sense for the people that are watching, you know, of course, a lot of industry people watching here, uh, you know, uh, talk a little bit about, about your background and how you came uh, to, to start Jukli. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm an engineer by training, but uh, I'm also a concert promoter. Um, early in the early 2000s, I fell into uh, actual DJing in nightclubs, but then I realized I'm a better promoter than a DJ. So I started booking other DJs. Uh, I started small and a couple hundred people. Over time, uh, I built a reputation and I was booking big acts like Tiesto, Cascade, huge outdoor events all by myself. Um, I was doing this in uh, Connecticut in the US and Connecticut was not a market for electronic music really at the time. Acts were traveling from Boston to New York. They were skipping Connecticut and in a couple of years into my promoting, I was stealing acts from Boston and just, you know, they were playing Connecticut instead. So, um, and I, I realized I really have a lot of passion for it and I wanted to marry two of my passions, engineering, software, uh, technology, and just live music in general. Um, and I've been bugging, you know, and anything I, I want to do, I, I want it to be designed really well. And I've been bugging a good friend of mine, Andrew Cornett, who's my co-founder. He was the first designer at Kickstarter. I was trying to steal him from Kickstarter and, you know, nobody ever leaves Kickstarter because it's such a <laughs> successful company. Uh, so I finally convinced him, Andrew, let's do our own thing. It's going to be awesome. And he's like, okay, let's do it. And he jumped in. And uh, we got into Techstars uh, earlier, like in March, uh, March of this year, uh, last year, 2013, and uh, you know became a legitimate company instead of like uh, you know how these like music startup. Oh, it's like a music hack day side project. You know, my belief in side projects ended a while back. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like if you're gonna do something, you have to dive in. You have to put all your efforts into it, and there needs to be the fear of failure. And if you don't have the fear, I don't think you're going to do a good job. Yeah. At least that's been my experience. You know, all the side projects, they're always mediocre. You know, they never become anything special. Uh, maybe some people succeeded, but, you know, it hasn't happened to me. So, um, so you know, we, we went into it. We went into Techstars, and it was a very intense program. It was great because, you know, we were introduced to a lot of uh, investors and the investment community, and uh, we were able to, you know, raise enough money to build a team of seven now uh, from, you know, investors of Pandora, SoundCloud, SoundHound. You know, uh, they've been very supportive of us, and, you know, we're building our product. Uh, we were uh, in New York only for, uh, you know, many months, and in November, uh, we launched in 10 cities. Apple featured us on the App Store in Best New Apps. Yeah. We got our 15 minutes of fame there. We got a bunch of downloads. That was nice. Uh, and now, now we had to figure out like how to turn these cities into something special because you don't just go from one to ten and everything is awesome. You know, like we were strong in New York. Now we're trying to build the other cities up. Uh, so basically, that's where we are currently. Yeah, sure. So uh, going from one city to ten cities, so how, how did that process work? And, and uh, uh, how are you finding users are reacting to Jukli? Because, uh, you know, you showed me in the prep, uh, uh, you know, a very good example, which is a, a list of people that are, if you just uh, do a search, actually, if, you, if you're back home, if you uh, type uh, uh, concert and alone or gig and alone, and you're going to find loads of people that are tweeting about going to gig alone or thinking about whether they should go to a gig alone or not. So, uh, you know, how, how do you find people are reacting to the opportunity of having the service now? Yeah, so we actually haven't fully unleashed the power of what we wanted to build. Um, we changed course a little bit uh, in the beginning you know where we wanted to go to is you know create the social environment for an open conversation for people finding each other and going yeah. going to concerts together um, it took us a while we just submitted a release to the app store now um, you know so there there are multiple things people are using Jukli for they, first of all they love the design of the app thanks to Andrew and his you know Kickstarter design awesomeness that you know we're getting a lot of accolades um, so first we started getting all the designers downloading the app and playing with it. oh this is great you know uh, so we did the iOS 7 version of it which is like also so people really liked, you know, the way it was built. And then we started breaking into different 
areas. Uh, our strongest markets are electronic music and indie music. So like we start with the startup people and the designer type people, hipsters who listen to a lot of indie music. And then we started making all these deals with the clubs and the promoters who promote electronic music. So we started getting like the teenagers, 18 to 24, which I call real people, not like the startup people. So that's when you start seeing the actual potential of your real product. Once the, you know, it's, you see the, you observe it outside of uh, uh, the tech crowd and uh, now you know we're observing uh, patterns in those cities and how people are using Jukli you know how they engage with their friends and uh, we're learning lessons and we call it you know nailing the playbook for cities we haven't nailed yet I think we're 80% there some of our cities like we're, we're very strong in New York because that's where we built up for a few months and then we're strong in LA Chicago San Francisco uh, Miami Vegas um, we're building up in Seattle, Portland, Denver, um, and then we want to launch in 10 other cities. Um, and of course, uh, you know, there needs to be a formula. Yeah. You know, um, we launched in 10 cities because, uh, you know, Apple uh, was going to feature us and they wouldn't feature you if you're only one city. Sure. And we wanted to take advantage of that, of course, and uh, we kind of jumped in, you know, got a bunch, bunch of downloads, got our 50 minutes of fame there. and. Uh, and now you know we're like we have to blossom the cities into into you know something special, and we're getting there. You know, these communities are really important, you know, because it's a social product. It's a friend. You, you need to see your friends and friends of friends, and the people get recommended to you in your network. And it doesn't need. It cannot feel empty. We cannot afford the app to feel empty. So actually, I'm a little bit nervous now because the next release that's going to be in the app stores probably sometime next week. Uh, is completely open you see actually you'll, you'll be able to see the people and talk to the people um, so far it's it was kind of still closed so yeah. it was a little bit more protected in that sense but right now like it's gonna be more transparent what's happening in the city like you're gonna go onto the show and see like how many people are actually engaging with it and who can you hit who can you send a message to so it'll be interesting I'm excited for it a little yeah. bit nervous also <laughs> that's great uh, one of your strategies uh, as well is to, to talk to, uh, directly to artists and promoters so how has that relationship evolved yeah so this wasn't there in the beginning you know, um, one thing I realized is, first of all, nobody takes you seriously until you get to a certain number of users. Yeah. Um, we just surpassed 10 million users and their friends. Uh, that's our main metric, uh, because when people are signing up, we're learning what you're listening to, and what your friends are listening to, and they're all, we know where they all live, and we have a way to contact all of them. So this is basically what our sales package is to when we go to promoters and venues and artists. Uh, we have ways to contact all these people, and you know, we, we have big data now. I think around 40, 50 million music taste data points right now in our database. That's, uh, that's an ongoing challenge for us as well because we're trying to build the app and the community at the same time. The backend data is growing and it doesn't just work. You know, like you have to put a lot of work into it. Something is, it starts going down, slowing down, too much data, database goes down. Um, so this data gives us the ability to go to the artist managers and say, look, your artist is touring. Example, Breathe Carolina. Uh, so they play Denver and Seattle, Austin, uh, Vegas, and they're going to come to New York. So we established a relationship with them. We basically went to them and said, hey, we have this cool app, Jukli, and we can help you promote your show in the city. And, you know, people like to experiment, especially like forward-thinking managers or uh, people who have hired digital agencies usually. The, they're, it's their job to find out new apps and, you know, really, they just experiment with you once. And if you can show results, they will stick with you. So, like, we actually showed results. Like, we showed them metrics where, you know, um, this is this is how much noise we made on Twitter. This is how much noise we made on Facebook. We sent this many emails. We sent this many push notifications. And uh, this many people sent invites to each other in the app. You know, so, like, user to user type of... So, you put them in a PDF and send it, and they look at it like, this looks great. Can we do this in other cities? You know? And we didn't know such a thing was going to happen. It's just so new. It's like one month old. Like, we've been, oh, my God, this is crazy. Like, 2014, we entered with, I think we had 40 partnerships or something. Yeah. And uh, so January just ended, right? Today is February 1st. Um, I'm going to send an investor update next week. And I'm going to tell them, like, we now have 250 partners from the venues to the promoters to the artist managers or artists directly working with us. And it kind of, like, changes our game. In yeah. the beginning, we were thinking 
how it's going to be like more of a ticketing thing and yeah. we kind of actually like we don't like to build stuff that we don't have passion for like me and andrew we talked to each other when we were building company like let's build something we're going to enjoy a lot yeah. you know when you wake up in the morning are you going to jump out of bed you know uh so like stuff like listings and ticketing like l those utilitarian things don't get us excited very much you want to build something like really emotional that's why we're really like focused on the social part yeah. of it uh like getting people excited like what gets people excited um uh, so yeah like that's where we are we kind of discovered that this like a concert marketing platform really works with uh the industry yeah. so like that that's going to provide us a huge revenue model like considering 20 percent of uh concerts are spent their budget 20 percent of their budget is spent on marketing like if you're booking a ten thousand dollar dj you should be spending two thousand dollars and facebook ads and flyers and radio ads and whatnot and yeah. email lists and you got to hire people on the streets you know like promoters aren't using Twitter ads just yet, but they're going to discover it because it's also, they're working on it. It's personalized. You can select an artist and region and yeah. uh, they're going to discover it soon, I think. But we want to be a top player in that space. We want to be like a top five concert marketing player. Uh, it's like a five billion, four or five billion market. So we're looking at, uh, of course, affiliate revenues and also marketing spend, right? Yeah. I mean, affiliate revenues, I'm not so excited about yeah. sale related revenues. Like I just want to, the whole ticketing thing, you know, it's been kind of painful. You know, the industry is very protective and a little bit, you know, not so friendly, you know. Uh, so when you're making business development deals, you know, sometimes you get good reception, sometimes you get, uh, you know, not like such a good reception. So like when you try to do ticketing type of deals, people are concerned, yeah. they're worried, they freak out, they have these exclusive contracts and stuff like that. And it's just like, it brings you down, man. It's like, you don't want to work <laughs> but now like what we're doing it's getting such good excitement you know people want what you have and you just want to do that instead yeah so and you know it's something that's going to work and people want it and uh, so we don't want to really deal with affiliate revenues but we want to actually do really good concert marketing and make sure that we send a lot of people to these concerts and their shows sell out just through the social uh, technology that we have Fantastic, and it's on uh, uh, Jukli. You can find that uh, on the iOS App Store, of course. Uh, uh, right now, it's probably better off if you are in one of those uh, 10 cities that are covered by the service, but the service is expanding all the time. So if you just want to check out the design, the app is actually available worldwide. You can download that from any uh, iOS App Store. Uh, talking also about... Web. Also, web. also web, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. And uh, have you got any plans for, for a further release on Android, for example? Yeah, so first we wanted to get it right. You know, in the past, uh, we released stuff in, in another startup, BlackBerry, Android, iOS, mobile web, web, sure, all at the yeah. same time. And it's just things are changing. The product isn't settled yet, and you, it's just too time-consuming. It, it was yeah. a terrible experience, so that was a good lesson learned for us. So I think that once the concert chat, we're going to add a little bit more, and then we're going to get into Android, you know, um, probably sometime in March, maybe. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching the DMT coverage of Medium 2014. You can find everything out on digitalmusictrends.com or you can go on youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends for all the latest videos.